Hello, this is an LTO cell, uh, lithium titanium oxide, otherwise known as lithium titanate. So this is a yin long uh, 6160H. It's a 40 amp hour cell and the nominal voltage is 2.3 volts. I think you can charge these up to about 2.8 and discharge them down to 1.5 volts. So how does an LTO cell differ from NMC or LFP? Well, the first thing you notice is that it has this lower uh, voltage, nominal voltage 2.3 on the LTO cell. Uh, LFP is 3.2 volts and NMC is typically 3.7 volts. Now that of course means that these cells have a lower uh, volumetric energy density and also a lower gravimetric energy density. So that's a weight based energy density. Uh, but they have so many other advantages that LTO cells are definitely worth taking a look at. So the first of those advantages is power density or C rate. So these are rated at 40 amp hours but they're rated for pulse charge and discharge rates of 10 C. So that's 400 amps. And of course, for that, you need a very low internal resistance. So I'm going to attempt to measure the internal resistance of this cell. Now, I'm not sure how successful this is going to be because this battery charger only measures down to uh, one milliohm. And uh, these cells are rated for a fraction of a milliohm internal resistance but let's give it a go and we have 2.25 volts uh, zero milliohms so yes it's so low the internal resistance that this measuring device just shows it as zero <laughs> interesting now I should say at this stage um, that these cells have been very kindly supplied to me by Hakadi battery Dot com. They sent me three of these cells. Uh, this is an A graded cell. Uh, they also sent me this B graded cell and this B minus graded cell. And I'll talk about the gradings. Now, Hakadi used a much more precise uh, internal resistance tester than I have. And they measured these at uh, 0.3 two milliohms for the A grade, uh, the B grade is 0.41 and the B minus grade, this one is uh, 0.78. So they're all below one milliohm. Let's do some rough calculations. Let's call these one milliohm uh, at a hundred amps. So we're looking at I squared R. Uh, hundred amps will be 10,000 times uh, 10 to the minus three. So that's 10 watts. Uh, at 200 amps current, we're looking at 40 watts. That is the internal heating effect of having an internal resistance of 1 milliohm. Of course, if it's less than 1 milliohm, uh, like the A-graded cells, then these numbers, of course, will be smaller. 300 amps will give you 90 watts of internal heating. Now, Hakadi Battery very kindly gave me another LTO cell. It's this one. It's a 40 amp hour. Uh, they say 2.4 volts, so 96 watt hours. Um, this one has a slightly smaller diameter. I think it's 60 millimeters, whereas these are 66. So what are the other advantages of LTO cells apart from this uh, very high current, this high power density? Well, there's temperature range. Uh, these cells can be charged and discharged at very low temperatures and quite high temperatures. Uh, we're talking down to something like minus 40 degrees C. The numbers vary depending on where you look. Um, I think uh, Yin Long say minus 50 degrees C and up to 65 degrees Celsius. So you can charge these well below zero degrees C, which of course you can't really do with LFP. Uh, the next thing is cycle life. I've seen numbers ranging from 20,000 cycles to 30,000 cycles. Uh, this of course is massively higher than NMC cells and even an order of magnitude higher than LFP and calendar aging 
20 years, I've also seen 30 years proposed for these cells. Safety. Uh, there's a video on the Yinlong website which shows these things uh, being guillotined in half, angle ground, drilled through with a drill, uh, squashed, dropped and all manner of other things and there's no fire, no explosion. So let's take a look at uh, this company Yinlong. Well they're now part of Gri Alter Nano New Energy. You can see here previously Yinlong Energy and I'm on the website yinlong.energy. Um, so you can see that they make uh, LTO batteries, commercial electric vehicles and electric chargers. Well those electric vehicles, if we click the electric vehicles link, are electric buses. So here we have a 12 meter electric transit bus and there's some data down the bottom of this page which shows that you can get it in two types, um, LTO, lithium titanate, or LFP. And what's interesting is that the LTO bus has approximately 100 kilowatt hours of energy storage. The LFP has about 300 kilowatt hours. Now, if you remember the uh, Hakadi LTO cell said 96 watt hours, let's call it 100 watt hours. Well, the bus has 100 kilowatt hours. So the bus will have something like a thousand of those LTO cells. Now, if you go to the Wikipedia article on electric bus, there's an entry here that says, as of 2017, 99% of all battery electric buses in the world have been deployed in mainland China with more than 421,000 buses. So if these were all LTO buses at this time, they may not have been, but if they were, then 421,000 buses is 421 million LTO cells. And you can see on these cells um, that the dates are all around that time, 2017, this is 2016, this is 2018, and this is 2019. Um, so electric buses really were huge in China, but not really anywhere else at this sort of period. And that leads me to believe that there must be a lot of these cells kicking around somewhere or other. And a lot of them are probably coming out of these electric buses. Now it also says by 2021, and of course we're now in 2024, um, Europe had reached 8,500 buses. So electric buses are growing now worldwide. Um, but even in 2021, the uh, China share of electric buses remained at 98%. So going back to Yinlong.energy's website, you can see under battery tech that they're saying the LTO battery life cycle is 10 years in a vehicle plus an additional 20 years as energy storage outside of the vehicle, giving a total lifespan of 30 years. They also go through some of the advantages of uh, lithium titanate. Titanate oxide, <laughs> interesting. I think it's titanium oxide or just titanate. Um, fast charging, so a theoretical uh, charge in six minutes, but the electric vehicles were being charged in 20 minutes. Uh, very wide temperature range from minus 40 to plus 60 degrees C very long lifespan, 30,000 full depth of discharge cycles, uh, ensuring a remarkable lifespan of 30 years, high charge and discharge capabilities, pulse currents of 400 amps for these 40 amp hour cells, and safety. So uh, I'll put a link to a video uh, where you can see these things being chopped up, drilled, angle ground, and all that sort of stuff. So where are these LTO cells being used uh, now? Well there's one area where these uh, have found a particular niche and that is in car audio systems. Now when I say car audio I'm talking about extreme high power car audio um, where 400 amps at 12 volts, well 500 amps at 12 volts gives you uh, six kilowatts. So a typical installation would have six of these in series to give you uh, 
well, a high version of 12 volts, a, a battery that can be paralleled up with a lead acid battery and connected to a car alternator. Yes, yeah, six kilowatts of audio. It's not something I'd want in my car, but some people are very enthusiastic about extreme bass. And here's the sort of final advantage of LTO cells. It's quite subtle, but if you take four LFP cells like these, uh, 3.2 volt nominal, 105 ampere cells, and you put them in series, the maximum voltage per cell, 3.65 volts, gives you 7.3 for two, so 14.6 volts for the 12 volt pack. Now, if you've got a car alternator um, putting out about 14.6 volts, you're right at the very top of LFP's voltage span. And if you've got any mismatch in terms of cell balancing, then it's likely you'll push one of the cells above its maximum 3.65 volts. Now, if you put six of these LTO cells in series, that's six times 2.3 nominal, so that's 13.8 volts. But the maximum voltage that these six cells in series can take is 16.8. Well, that's way above, uh, well, a little bit above uh, the maximum for lead acid and any alternator you're likely to come across. And the minimum voltage that these cells can go down to is 9 volts. So it's very easy to put an, L put an LTO 6S pack in series with lead acid, charge it with a vehicle alternator, and you easily cover the range of voltages that the lead acid battery uh, can handle. And you probably don't need a BMS. You would need a balancer to keep the six uh, cells balanced. But uh, yeah, you could get away with no BMS because you're never going to be likely to push any one cell over its 2.8 volt maximum. So what am I going to do next with these cells? Well, I've been making up uh, cables for my charger discharger. So I'm going to charge these cells to their maximum voltage, do a discharge, uh, check the curve shape, also uh, check the capacity of these cells, discharge them right down to their minimum voltage uh, and test these three cells. Not for internal resistance because I don't really have the equipment for, but for that, but I can test their capacity. And so that's a quick introduction to lithium titanate cells. And I've already started charging this one and then I'll do a discharge. And I'll come back with the results in a another video. But for this video, that's it. Cheerio.